as Sarah's galleon descended into the abyss. The water around her turned ink black. The pressure of the deep, weighing like a tangible force against her chest. The only light was the luminescent glow from the abyssal map. Its eerie radiance casting ghostly reflections on the dark waters, revealing fleeting glimpses of the Leviathan's realm, a place where no human was meant to venture. The sounds of the upper ocean faded, replaced by the creaks and groans of the galleon as it navigated the trench's oppressive depths. The abyssal map, now pulsing in sync with the heartbeat of the deep, guided her through a landscape of towering underwater mountains and vast, shadowy plains, where the wrecks of ancient vessels lay entombed, their outlines barely visible in the dim light. As she journeyed deeper, the remnants of countless ships and their drowned crews appeared, suspended in the water like macabre statues, each a marker of the Leviathan's insatiable hunger for souls and stories. These spectral figures pointed the way, their silent gestures leading Sarah to the heart of the trench, where the ruins of a colossal shipwreck loomed, its broken form the entrance to the Leviathan's lair. The shipwreck, an ancient galleon of immense size and ornate design, was impaled on a spire of rock, its timbers encrusted with barnacles and deepening shadows, the voices of the drowned melding with the groan of the ancient ship. Sarah, guided by the abyssal map's glow, navigated the submerged galleon's corridors, each turn taking her deeper into the Leviathan's sanctum, where the ocean's darkest secrets were kept. As she reached the center of the wreck, the map dissolved into a constellation of deep sea light, illuminating a vast cavern where the Leviathan awaited, its form a colossal mass of tentacles and eyes, ancient beyond time its body encircling the heart of the abyss, the creature's gaze, multifaceted and penetrating, fixed on Sarah, seeing not just her body, but her soul, her fears, and her courage. In this timeless moment, Sarah understood the Leviathan's true nature. It was not just a monster of the deep, but a guardian of the ocean's memory keeper of the tales of all who had sailed its waters, both living and lost. The souls it gathered were not consumed, but preserved, their stories becoming part of the ocean's eternal narrative. Sarah, standing before the Leviathan, realized that her journey to the abyss was not just to confront a monster, but to understand the balance of life and death memory and oblivion that the Leviathan embodied. She spoke, her voice steady and clear in the underwater silence, offering not a challenge, but a pact. To carry the stories of the drowned back to the surface world, to ensure their memories were honored and not forgotten. The Leviathan its myriad eyes reflecting the depths of Sarah's resolve, acknowledged her offer. With a slow, deliberate movement, it uncoiled its massive form, revealing a vortex of light and shadow, the gateway through which the souls it guarded could be released, their stories told once more. Sarah, her heart both heavy and exultant, watched as the spirits of sailors, explorers, and all those lost to the sea rose from the abyss, their forms glowing with the light of remembrance, ascending to the ocean's surface and beyond, to find peace in the tales of their lives and adventures. 
shared among the living. As the spirits departed, the Leviathan sank back into the depths of the trench, its form fading into the darkness, a silent promise that the ocean's depths would always hold more mysteries to unravel, more stories to be told. Sarah returned to the surface, the galleon rising with her, breaking through the water into the dawn of a new day. The Mariner's Museum, once a prison of lost souls and dark legacies, stood silent and empty, its artifacts now just relics of the past, their haunted power dissolved by the truth Sarah had unveiled. The museum reopened, its exhibits transformed to honor the memory of those who had sailed the seas, telling the stories of their journeys, their dreams, and their fates, with Sarah as the curator of this new collection, a guardian of the tales that the ocean had whispered to her in the abyss. The story concludes with the Mariner's Museum no longer a place of haunting and horror, but a beacon of learning and remembrance. Its halls echoing with the voices of the past, telling tales of adventure, tragedy, and the eternal, mysterious call of the deep. Alex, feeling the gravity of his situation, approached the tank, the heartbeat sound growing louder reverberating through the chamber and sinking with his own pulse. The figure within the tank, now clearly visible, was not just a person, but a conglomeration of suffering, a physical manifestation of the asylum's collective horrors, its body a patchwork of scars and open wounds, eyes that held the abyss of madness. The sigils on the floor began to glow, casting an otherworldly light that illuminated the chamber with a spectral glow. The machines around the room whirred to life, their purpose unclear, but ominously linked to the tank and its occupant. Alex's equipment captured everything, though he doubted any normal medium could truly convey the surreal horror of the scene before him. As he drew closer, the figure in the tank reached out, pressing a hand against the glass, its touch sending ripples through the liquid, distorting its form further. It was then that Alex understood the figure's role in the asylum's legacy. It was both prisoner and guardian, a repository for the anguish and insanity that had permeated the place, bound here by the sigils and the experiments that sought to harness its power. The air in the chamber thickened, a palpable pressure that seemed to compress the very essence of the room, concentrating its energy on Alex. The voices of the past, now deafening, filled his mind with whispers of madness each tale a thread in the tapestry of the asylum's dark history, driven by a need to end the cycle, to free the spirit and himself from the place. Alex searched the chamber for anything that might break the sigil's hold. Among the papers and old medical journals, he found a hand-drawn diagram of the chamber, detailing the tank, the sigils, and a mechanism that suggested a way to open the tank, to release the entity contained within. With each step towards the mechanism, the chamber reacted, the energy building, the machines whirring louder, the sigils pulsing faster, the entity in the tank thrashed, its form blurring in the liquid, as if struggling to be free yet fearing its release. Alex, his resolve stealing, reached the mechanism, a series of levers and valves 
archaic, and complex. He hesitated, aware that his actions could either liberate the spirit or unleash something far worse. The heartbeat, now thunderous, echoed his indecision. A drumbeat to a choice that teetered on the edge of salvation or damnation. The story holds its breath here, with Alex poised to make a decision that would alter the fate of both the spirit and the Blackburn Asylum. His hand on the mechanism that could either open a door to healing or a portal to deeper darkness, setting the stage for a climactic moment where the past's chains could be shattered or tightened further in the depths of the asylum's haunted heart. With the cacophony of voices and the relentless heartbeat driving him, Alex steeled his nerves and manipulated the mechanism. The ancient gears groaning in protest, as if resisting the change after decades of dormancy, the tank vibrated, the liquid inside churning as the figure's movements grew more frantic, its form pressing against the glass, seeking escape, or perhaps warning. The sigils on the floor blazed with an intensity that cast ominous shadows along the chamber walls, the symbols seeming to move, alive with the energy of the contained entity. The machines linked to the tank accelerated their whirring, their purpose becoming horrifyingly clear. They were designed not just to contain, but to siphon the suffering and madness from the entity, feeding the asylum's insatiable hunger for torment. As the last valve twisted into place, a shudder ran through the chamber, the ground trembling as if the very foundation of the asylum quaked at the impending release. The glass of the tank showed the first crack, a spiderweb of lines that spread rapidly, the liquid beginning to seep out, carrying with it a wail of pent-up rage and despair that filled the chamber, a sound that was both victory and lament. Alex stepped back, watching as the tank's integrity failed, the cracks widening until, with a resounding crash, the glass shattered, releasing the entity into the chamber. The liquid pooled rapidly on the floor, swirling around the sigils, which began to dim, their power waning with the entity's liberation. The figure, now free from its confinement, stood in the center of the chamber, a being of pain and anger, yet also relief. Its form was unstable, flickering between the human and the monstrous, a reflection of the myriad souls absorbed into its being during its imprisonment. The freed entity turned its gaze upon Alex, its eyes a malik of sorrow and gratitude. In this gaze, Alex saw the untold stories of the asylum's past, the hidden truths of its legacy of suffering. The entity spoke, not in words, but in a flood of emotions and images, conveying its history, its purpose, and its desire for release from the endless cycle of pain. As the entity communicated its plight, the chamber began to collapse, the machinery falling silent, the sigils fading from the floor. The containment had been broken, the energy that sustained the asylum's dark heart dissipating. The walls crumbled, revealing the skeletal frame of the building, the illusion of the asylum's grandeur falling away to expose the decayed reality. Alex realized that with the entity's release, the asylum would no longer be a place of haunting and horror. Its legacy of pain and madness would dissolve 
with the entity's departure to the afterlife, where it could finally find peace. He knew he must escape before the structure succumbed to the collapse, the physical manifestation of the asylum's end. The story pauses with Alex and the entity at the center of a collapsing world. The asylum's true nature revealed and its long night of suffering coming to an end. The path forward is one of escape and survival. Not just from the physical destruction of the building, but from the remnants of its dark past. As the secrets of the Blackburn Asylum are laid bare and its tormented heart is finally set free with the cacophony of the past ringing in his ears, Alex steeled his nerves and began to manipulate the mechanism, the levers and valves cold and resistant under his touch. The chamber responded with an intensifying energy, the sigils on the floor burning brighter, casting their eldritch light across the walls, illuminating the anguish etched into the very stone. The entity in the tank became more agitated, its movements desperate, as if it understood the precipice on which it balanced, between continued imprisonment and potential freedom. As Alex adjusted the final valve, a deep, resonant groan echoed through the chamber, the sound of ancient locks and seals giving way after decades of confinement. The liquid in the tank began to drain, slowly revealing the full form of the entity, its body a map of the asylum's legacy of horror, each scar and wound a testament to the suffering endured within these walls. As the fluid level lowered, the entity's eyes locked with Alex's, a silent communication of fear, hope, and shared dread of the unknown consequences of its release. The chamber shook, stones grinding against stones, as if the building itself resisted the breaking of the old magics that bound the entity. The machines around the room whirred to a frantic pitch, their purpose now clear. They had been designed to maintain the entity's containment, to keep it subdued and isolated, powering the asylum's haunted heart with its endless torment. With the tank nearly empty, the entity slumped forward, its chains loose, but still anchored by the sigils that glowed ominously on the chamber floor. Alex realized that the physical release from the tank was only the first step. To truly free the entity and break the cycle of suffering, he would need to disrupt the sigillic bindings that held it captive. The whispers of the past now screamed in his mind, a maelstrom of voices pleading for release, for closure. Alex guided by an instinct born of empathy and desperation, stepped forward, placing his hands against the cold glass of the tank, his presence offering a semblance of comfort to the tortured spirit within. As he made contact, a rush of visions flooded his senses, the entity's memories pouring into him, a torrent of pain and fear, but also of moments of clarity and understanding. Through these visions, Alex saw the key to unlocking the sigils, a counterspell woven into the very fabric of the chamber, hidden in plain sight among the intricate designs that adorned the walls. Armed with this knowledge, he turned to the sigils tracing his fingers over their lines, speaking words that felt ancient and powerful, 
a language of binding and release. The sigils flickered under his touch, their light waning, the chains around the entity loosening, its form beginning to dissolve into the air, becoming part of the mist that filled the chamber. As the entity's form faded, the oppressive atmosphere of the chamber lifted, the shadows retreating, the voices of the past quieting to a whisper, the machinery ground to a halt, their purpose fulfilled, their drone replaced by a silence that spoke of release and relief. The story halts at this moment of liberation with Alex in the center of the now quiet chamber, the entity freed from its physical and ethereal bonds, its essence dispersed, but its legacy indelibly etched in the history of the Blackburn Asylum. The path forward lay open, a journey to understand the full extent of the asylum's secrets and the true nature of the entity that had haunted its halls, setting the stage for a deeper exploration into the shadows of the past and the mysteries yet unraveled. As the last remnants of the entity dissipated into the air, the chamber's oppressive aura lifted, replaced by a silence that echoed with the absence of the long-held suffering the darkness receded, revealing the stark reality of the room. No longer a place of torment, but just an empty, forgotten chamber beneath the asylum. Alex, standing amid the relics of arcane science and shackled pain, felt a profound sense of release, yet also the weight of responsibility. The entity's memories now part of his own psyche, contained not just the horrors of the past, but also the knowledge of the asylum's deeper secrets, hidden even from those who had walked its halls in life. Compelled by the visions shared through the entity's touch, Alex knew his journey was far from over. The sigils on the floor, though dimmed, still held the echo of their power hinting at a network of dark energies that extended beyond the chamber, beneath the asylum, into tunnels and catacombs long sealed from the world. With the entity's release, these paths were now subtly illuminated, a labyrinthine map that beckoned him to uncover what lay beyond. The asylum, a nexus of pain and paranormal activity was but the surface layer of a much older, deeper history, its foundations rooted in rituals and events that predated the building itself. Venturing into the newly revealed passageways, Alex felt the shift in the air, a change from the stagnant oppression of the chamber to a cool, moving current as if the asylum itself was exhaling, releasing the pent-up energies of decades, the tunnels twisted and turned, leading him through the bedrock on which the asylum was built, to chambers and halls carved from the earth, their origins ancient and purpose obscure. In these subterranean depths, Alex discovered the remnants of a much older structure, perhaps a temple or sanctuary, its walls covered in carvings that depicted scenes of celestial alignments and terrestrial powers, of beings that dwelled in the spaces between the stars and the sea, their forms both beautiful and terrifying. The air thrummed with a residual energy a remnant of ceremonies conducted in this antediluvian place. Its purpose lost time, but its echoes still resonating in the stones. 
As Alex explored this forgotten sanctum, he realized that the asylum was merely the latest incarnation of a site that had long been a crossroads of cosmic and earthly forces, a place where the veil between worlds was thin and malleable. At the heart of this ancient space, Alex found an altar, its surface a map of constellations and geographies that seemed to shift and change under his gaze, a living chart of the cosmos and its ley lines. Here, the memories of the entity merged with the whispers of the stones, guiding his understanding of the altar's use as a tool for navigating not just the physical world, but the realms beyond, suggesting that the asylum's horrors were a reflection of a much larger, more complex pattern of power and destiny. The story now finds Alex at the center of an ancient cosmic puzzle. The asylum's dark past, just one piece of a larger, more intricate tapestry that spans time and space. His next steps into the secrets of the ancient temple beneath the asylum promise to reveal not just the origins of the Blackburn's hauntings, but the connections of our world to the vast, uncharted wilderness of the cosmos, setting the stage for a journey into the heart of the unknown. In the bowels of the ancient structure beneath the Blackburn Asylum, Alex stood before the shifting altar, its surface alive with the cosmic dance of stars and ley lines. The air around him vibrated with an ancient power, the whispers of the past and the murmurs of the cosmos intertwining, guiding him to activate the altar, to delve deeper into the mysteries it guarded. As he placed his hands on the cold stone, the carvings glowed, their light casting otherworldly shadows on the walls of the subterranean temple. The ground beneath him rumbled, a deep, resonant sound that seemed to echo from the very heart of the earth, as if the activation of the altar had awakened something long dormant. With each passing moment, the carvings on the altar shifted more rapidly, forming and reforming into patterns and maps that charted not just the physical geography of the world, but also the ethereal pathways that connected this ancient site to other places of power and knowledge, both on Earth and in the stars, driven by a compulsion that was part intuition part memory from the entity, Alex navigated the altar's map, his movements guided by the flow of energies that coursed through the ley lines. The temple responded, revealing hidden compartments and passages, each containing artifacts and tomes that held the wisdom of the ancients, their pages filled with the lore of the cosmos of beings that dwelled in the spaces between stars and of the rituals that could summon or banish them. The deeper Alex delved into the temple's secrets, the more he realized that the Blackburn Asylum's dark past was but a surface wound over a much deeper, older scar, a place where the boundaries between worlds had been thinned and torn by ancient rites and forgotten packs. As he explored the newly revealed chambers, he uncovered evidence of a cult that had operated in the shadows of history. Their goal to harness the powers of the cosmos through the altar, to open gateways to other realms and commune with the beings that resided there. The asylum built atop this site had unknowingly tapped into this wellspring of arcane energy, its tragedies and hauntings, a byproduct of the cult's celestial manipulations. 
the path now led Alex to the central chamber of the temple, where the ley lines converged into a nexus of power, a focal point that amplified the energy of the cosmos and the earth. Here, a grand mechanism, part astronomical device and part ritual altar, dominated the room. Its gears and spindles aligned with the celestial map on the altar above. As Alex approached the mechanism, the air shimmered, the veil between worlds thinning, revealing glimpses of other realities, shadowy and vast, filled with the potential for both enlightenment and madness. The voices of the cosmos whispered to him, tales of creation and destruction, of the cycles of the universe, and of the pivotal role this ancient sight played in the cosmic balance. The story now teeters on the edge of cosmic revelation, with Alex poised to unlock the secrets of the ancient mechanism, to explore the connections between the Blackburn Asylum's hauntings and the larger, more profound mysteries of existence. His actions could either close the wounds of the past, sealing the thin places and banishing the darkness, or open the floodgates to a broader, more enigmatic universe, setting the stage for a journey into the deepest realms of the unknown. In the ancient, hidden chamber beneath the Blackburn Asylum, Alex stood before the grand cosmic mechanism, the key to untangling the web of celestial and earthly energies that converged at this sacred site. His hands hovered over the device, aware that his actions would either seal the rifts torn in the fabric of reality or widen them inviting the unknown into the world. Drawing upon the knowledge gleaned from the entity's memories and the ancient tomes of the temple, Alex began to adjust the mechanism, aligning its gears with the celestial map projected on the walls and floor. As each piece moved into place, the air around him vibrated, the thin veil between dimensions shimmering, pulsing with light and shadow. The nexus of power at the heart of the chamber throbbed like a beating heart, synchronizing with the mechanism's rhythm. The cosmic and terrestrial energies harmonizing into a single resonant tone. The shadows cast by the light of otherworldly stars began to recede. The whispers of the cosmos softening into a silence filled with anticipation. With a final turn of the mechanism, a surge of energy coursed through the chamber, a wave of light that swept across the temple, cleansing it of the lingering darkness, the echoes of pain and madness that had seeped into its stones, the rifts, the wounds in reality, that had allowed the horrors of the asylum to manifest, began to close. The ancient seals restored by Alex's actions, reaffirming the barriers between worlds. As the light faded, Alex found the chamber transformed. The oppressive air of mystery and menace was gone, replaced by a peaceful stillness. The celestial map on the altar now showed a harmonious alignment of stars and ley lines, a cosmic balance restored by the resealing of the nexus. The entity, its essence now part of the restored equilibrium, whispered a final farewell to Alex, its voice no longer a harbinger of madness, but a message of gratitude and hope. The spirits of the Blackburn Asylum, 
freed from the chains of their tormented past, passed into the light of the afterlife, their departure marked by a gentle luminescence that filled the chamber. Emerging from the depths of the temple, Alex felt the weight of the night's events lift from his shoulders. The asylum above, once a place of darkness and despair, stood silent and empty, its halls no longer haunted by the pain of the past. In the light of the new day, the Blackburn Asylum was just a building. Its history of horror concluded, its secrets sealed once more beneath the earth. Alex left the asylum, the dawn breaking over the horizon, casting the world in a new light. He carried with him the knowledge of the night's journey, a testament to the thin lines that separate madness from sanity, darkness from light, and the known from the unknown. The Blackburn Asylum's tale was ended, but the story of the cosmos, with its myriad mysteries and wonders, continued. The adventure of exploration and understanding forever unfolding in the vast tapestry of existence.